Okay, so we finally got the new wheel studs in. You can see by the mass of tools that got out. It's not an easy task by any stretch of the imagination. I can work pretty fast and I'm already about four hours into this side. Now the front's done. You can see we got some pretty good poke on there, two more inches. And uh, it's sitting a little funky because it's still jacked up in the back. You can see here, we're two inches from our control arm now. Where before we were rubbing, you can see how shiny it was. Everything went good. Uh, the wheel studs are easy to knock out. And I'll show you what we end up doing here. We end up finding these Lexus IS300 studs that are quite a bit longer. And uh, there's a company on eBay selling these. They're made in, they're OEM or made in the USA. I think they're just made in the USA. And everybody's using these. They were 63 bucks for a whole set of them. And they're quite a bit longer than the OEM. There's OEM right there. Um, so long story short, the problem is, here's everything installed, right? And the wide tracks wheel spacers installed, fully installed, it's torqued. Um, I was fearful I was going to cut these off, but they stick in far enough where I didn't have to. Um, there's a few things about this whole operation. Uh, you need to use Loctite whenever you torque them in. And on the rear, this is the rear, you, the longer, the studs you're putting in are too long to fit in, right? So you can't get them in. Once you take the disc off, there's not enough room. Actually, I had to cut a little notch in the back plate back here. I don't know if you can even see that or not. But I had to notch it back there to be able to get these in. Now, if you don't want to notch it, you could probably slide the whole axle out, maybe unbolt the back plate, slide it off of there, but I think it's under the bearing and do it like that. Long story short, you're either going to have to drill a hole or notch a back plate to be able to slide that in. And uh, unfortunately though, since the OEM lug nuts are closed in, you're not going to be able to ever put the OEM lug nuts back on if you want to take the spacers off. You're either going to have to get new lug nuts or you're going to have to cut the ends off of these so the, the longer suck go through them. I'm not really sure how you would do that. Hopefully we don't have to deal with any of that. Um, on the front when we did it, we just bent the little tab in, like the back plate. You know, we just had to tap it in a little bit and we could fit the studs in. The front's a lot easier uh, to do that. Now we did these blue Loctite. I thought we were buying red. I was in a hurry. I was at Walmart. And it's in a red container, but it's blue. <laughs> it's blue Loctite. Just kind of the way things go sometimes. So, um, we're going to leave the brake off of this. The other, this thing came to me when I bought it. It didn't have the other side of the brake, so the e-brake e didn't work. Um, we are doing the mod for the emergency brake cable. And while we're in here, we're also doing the mod for the uh, sway bar. So we unhooked one side of the rear sway bar, so it's not dangling. So we're going to take the whole thing off. It'll still move with the other side. Uh, we have the emergency brake cable itself zip tied up out of the way where it runs along the frame and we made sure it got it away from the airbag uh, for the air ride now I mean that's just kind of how this thing's going here I would say difficulty wise just these shades a little bit difficulty wise eight and a half out of ten ten being the worst case if you don't have a pretty good shop, some pretty good know-how, don't try this at home. It's going to be bad news, I promise you. Um, you also have to, we use a, I don't know where it's even at right now. Use a different nut. I went and found a nut that, or the thread, same thread as this, so the M12 by 1.50. And uh, this isn't it, but it gives you an idea. So I use not a lug nut, a different nut to run down, and that pulls a stud into place. We use these are big impact, and just wash it as soon as it was seated down. Then we stopped with it. Um, it was about everything my 1,100 foot-pound Makita could could do, and uh, well, not everything it could do, but it took some pretty good force to seat those splines in. 
And once they're in, you can hear the, the tone of the impact changes. It is like a you put a lug nut on, it gets tight, right? And you can hear it change, you know you're in. Um, these inner new studs should not come loose. If for some reason one's not seated correctly, that stud could get a little slop in it. Um, these wheel spacers are supposed to not break no matter what. The only thing that will break them is loose lug nuts on these inner ones. That's why you lock tight them. So you're supposed to go back and recheck them. We might do that down the road. Since we lock tighted them, I don't know. I mean, we're pretty confident in it, but you, you still just never know. Uh, like I said, we're about four and a half, five hours into the first side here. And it's not fun at all. Um, a couple things with the rear shocks. That has, on the very top, it has a 14 bolt. I'm sorry, a 17 nut on top of the strut. Um, if you're trying to change the rear shocks on your on your Sequoia, you're probably going to have to cut that at the top. We had to cut the front struts. Mine, and we tried to turn it with the wrench. You could barely get in there. It's just seized in. I don't know if I'm going to do that today or not. Uh, I have OEM shocks. You probably should have got some lift shocks. I might wait and get some lift shocks before I go ahead and uh, venture into that. Uh, but we're going to leave it like it is today. We're going to bolt the wheel on and you just torque these however you need for your wheels. And we'll do that in a low setting on the impact. It ends up about 60, 65 foot pounds, somewhere in there, maybe 70. And, um, you know, that should do it. Okay, so we're doing the other front side. You can see we're in the front. Uh, you can see where I've been rubbing back here on the frame. It's kind of dark in here. The light, lighting's weird. You can see we're rubbing on the control arm. And we did the front sway bar delete on the front also. This thing rode so much better. With the front sway bar on it, it rode so freaking rough, guys. I'm telling you, it would just beat you to death on the interstate or any kind of rough road. So we did that. It gave the front suspension some travel. If it goes up too high on these Toyotas though, the spindle will actually hit the spring. So, I don't know. Um, anyway, for right now, I'll be done here. Hope you guys, you guys should be able to see that. Uh, we just pulled the caliper off, the two big bolts back here, and we put a little S-hook up there and, and just hooked it in, or say it's clamped on there. That allows you to take off, if I could do it one-handed here, the disc and then those are actually those are actually eBay drilled and slotted rotors I bought that were zinc coated it's been almost four four or five years ago I've had those they're doing perfect man they're cheap too they're like 60 bucks for a pair or less than 60 bucks for a pair or something like that um, so here we have our studs, and they're pressed into splines in the back, like so. Um, we have a little piece of tin right here on the dust shield. And all I did, where's the hammer at here? On the fronts, all you gotta do is take a hammer. And that's all you gotta do. Just tap it flat like that, and that's it. Um, so now, what I was doing on the other ones, I was threading a lug nut on there and hitting it. It would flatten the end of the lug nut a little bit. We're not going to reuse these. If I ever go back to stock, I'm not going to reuse the same, the same ones. So these are real easy. If you look at it like that, we're just going to smack it like so. And these knock right out. Can't ask for an easier nut. And that's using a four pound sledge though, a hand sledge. Oh, almost pinched my finger. Okay, so there's all that. And now all we gotta do is pressure new ones in. And while we bent that 
out of the way here that allows you to come in here and see ordinarily you won't be able to fit that long well here how about I show you the hell <laughs> looked at it and it's pointing up uh, you can see here that will actually allow you to slip the longer stud in before it would be hitting that 10 right slip in like that usually take the hammer and we'll get it started and now we'll have to put a nut on there run it down with the impact and you want to look on the back side here and make sure you're all the way flush there's no gap in there at all so we just need to do that six times um, we'll do that and install our wheel spacer and the front's done thank god these are easy the back you have to cut that back plate that's a little more entailed but it's not too bad i'm done worse okay so here we are don't forget to put your brake disc back on we have all the studs pressed in but it's easy to overlook that if you get busy doing something else come back you've got to put the brake disc on this won't fit on right you wonder why so it should fit on real good just like that we're going to take our nuts that they gave us here we're gonna get a loctite and we're just going to put a little drop on the threads we're just gonna go on down the line That. Now these are acorn style, so what that means is they're going to self-center, you know, they're tapered on the end here. So whenever you tighten this down, this is the last one, let me put the lock tied up. We're going to squeeze out an accident, squish all the floor. We're going to torque these about 100 foot-pounds. And the only thing I noticed, my half inch drive socket, impact socket is too fat, so I have to use an adapter and a 3 8 deep well. And uh, that's the only thing that works on it. Before we do that, we're going to turn our impact down to 1, because if not, it'll explode this. jobs and that'll give me some pry again it won't take as much as what you think Just making sure, and when you're done, always turn your torque wrench back down to zero and don't bang your torque wrench on the floor, it'll treat you good. Set down gently, keep it out of harm's way, take that off. Now we're ready to install the brake caliper, two bolts, put the wheel back on this side's done. Well. That's pretty much it. We have them all done except for the rear. I'll give you a look here. But I notice the rear does stick out a little further with the spacers on. This one doesn't have a spacer on it. And the front has a spacer. The front doesn't really stick out much. And then if you go to the other side and look, try not to slam my shin into the hitch there. You can even see that. Can't even, it looks just black on the screen. At any rate, 
the back one with the spacer sticks out pretty far and then the front one doesn't really so i don't know that's gonna be it for the total wheel spacer video not an easy task at all not a cheap task but if you want out to market wheels on a first gen tundra sequoia forerunner i don't even know what all all kinds of crap they use this on highlander anything that has these lug nuts you're gonna have to change the wheel studs and it's a pain in the butt so good luck guys thanks for watching we'll see you later